For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Matt Money Shot. Still with the man, cheese as always. Got an updated best coaching adjustments to use right now video, and that's because I'm playing defense pretty differently, and that goes as far as my coaching adjustments as well. So typically, when I change what I'm doing, I try to do an updated version. But there's really three different ways to play defense in Madden 24 right now. And I'm going to show you guys the differences between all three. It all has to do with coaching adjustments. There's three different systems, three different schemes you can run when it comes to your defense. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys the three different ones in this video. This is going to be probably the best version of this video that I've made this year. And I'm going to start off with offense. But before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this as the game changes, because there has been a lot of updates lately, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comments section. Other than that, let's go and get right into the video. Now, I'm going to start off with offense, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because I'm, there's not a lot to do. At the beginning of the year, I typically would put my ball carrier conservative from time to time, but I don't really do that anymore because you lose the ability to juke and spin and all that stuff, and that's too important to me. So if you run with the quarterback, I would say putting this a conservative is probably important. If you're running an offense where you're running with quarterback a lot or maybe running with receivers, they may fumble more than running backs. But other than that, I would not put this to anything but balance, and I would just leave everything here alone. All right, so I'm going to start off on the defensive side, getting rid of some of the lesser important ones, things like cornerback matchup, option defense, strip ball, and tackling these four here really don't matter too much they don't really do a ton cornerback matchups is probably the most important i like to leave this one at balance but it really depends on how you play if you're playing in zone coverage i would say leaving this at balanced is probably the best way because when you flip the field or when your opponent a lot of times might flip the play uh, if you're matching your cornerbacks Sometimes the cornerbacks will, will, will traverse with the receivers if they if they flip the field. And a lot of times they'll hike the ball before the cornerbacks get set. It can cause you a lot of issues. So me personally, I like to go by overall or by speed if I'm playing man coverage. That if I'm playing zone coverage, I like to leave it at balance. So that's something that's new to my setup that I notice a lot. When people flip the field with their receivers or if they motion receivers, a lot of times it'll glitch out the defense if you have it set to by overall or by speed or by depth chart or whatever. And it's not really that important if you're playing in a zone coverage because a lot of times in zone coverage you can't necessarily just run right past it anyway man coverage is a different story though man coverage you can get bombed by a very fast receiver they just outrun the cornerback it's something that happens more often where zone typically they won't let receivers get behind them so this is probably one of the first ones that i'm going to say the best way to run this would be on balanced unless you're running man coverage then you can either match by overall say you know you have a uh, not too much if you're not giving up too much speed overall is fine but if you are giving up too much speed you're typically going to want to switch to buy speed because otherwise you're going to be in trouble on things like straight streaks so that's going to be my probably one of the first changes that i've noticed lately that's probably one of the better ways to play uh, as far as option defense you just always want to leave it to conservative you don't have any other reason not to if you do this you'll just always leave somebody to focus on the quarterback or at least uh, for the most part i've noticed that this doesn't work 100 percent of the time depending on what defense you're in but trust me there's no real benefit to leaving this on anything else conservative will at least make sure that somebody's there to make sure the quarterback doesn't break off a big run strip ball can't say i get a lot of tackles or a lot of strip ball tackles uh, but I would say I typically leave it on conservative because if I can get the actual uh, thing to pop up here, it says it lowers break tackle chances, which is what I want. I just want secure tackles. I, if I have this on high or aggressive, you're going to notice that you get a lot of face mask penalties, so it's not really worth it. So conservative to just make sure that everybody lands their tackles is important to me. And then when it comes to tackling, I typically go to aggressive because this kind of balances out the conservative, where the conservative uh, will make sure that they secure those tackles and aggressive will try to um, they'll try to get more hit sticks uh, which has a higher chance of broken tackles but like i said conservative has a lower chance of broken tackles so it kind of evens out if you go conservative it says it'll, it'll increase the chance of allowing yards after contact which i don't really want to do so i would say tackling is best either at balanced or if you're trying to get fumbles you can go a certain conservative without really worrying about it because like i said i'm balancing out the negative with the strip ball that's pretty much how i run those so that brings me to the important part of this video which is really the part that i wanted to worry about the most anyway which is uh the, the top two and the bottom four like these are the ones like i said you can run three very different defensive schemes with these two and with these four here so we're going to focus on that i'm going to start off with auto flip which is something that i typically left on the entire year but based off of how i'm running my defense right now i take this off every single time uh, which is something i didn't do earlier in the year i find it's very important to do that and i'll show you guys why uh, I've shown this defense. I've shown defenses like this in a lot of different videos. I like to run a lot of cover one man. I feel like cover one man's 
a pretty good defense. The current defense that I'm using is the 3-3 odd, and I'm using a lot of cover ones. I'm not necessarily, I mean, I'm using a lot of cover threes as well. I'm using the same scheme where I'm using the Sam Mike one. I put out several videos about that, but I plan on putting out a video about the Mike three press, which is very similar. You can see it's basically the exact same design, only it's not a man coverage, it's his own coverage. But basically, if I wanna make sure that I run the defense, I'm gonna show you guys properly. I wanna have auto flip off, or you won't be able to flip this pre-snap. And flipping it after you come out of the huddle is a dangerous proposition. You wanna cut down on as many adjustments as possible because your opponent will try to quick hike you to get an advantage. So, is you always wanna make sure that that uh, you have the the Mabel concept in this particular look and in like I said the man coverage look which I also run I'll show you guys that in a second where I always have this guy here this outside linebacker on a hard flat to the open side of the field or whatever side has the most receivers typically as well because the open side of the field is where 90% of people run their offense that's where they're going to want to run their offense if you run to the short side you have issues like the sideline coming into play that's the best defender on the field so to me it's best to try to always run like the way that I'm running this particular defense I always have this linebacker whether it's in this look whether I'm in a cover one which you can see right here if I if it's the same thing I have him on the hard flat because you know simple things like zig routes or out routes or you know any number of short routes can get open against these man coverage looks and a lot of people they see a man coverage right away they're gonna go straight to their zig route in their arsenal and this hard flat will help take that away so that's two very important changes now in the past I didn't do that I had auto flip on now I have it off and I also have uh, my cornerback matchups to balance two very important changes another one that another way you can run your defense is by setting your auto alignment to base. Now that's something that I still do quite a bit too, which is something that I wasn't doing for a while, but I'll show you guys, I'll let you guys make your decisions on that. If you're gonna run base, which to me is very important when you're running zone, but once again, if you're running a lot of man coverage, it's gonna mess up your man coverages. So let's go ahead and let's pick the pinch zero, or let's go ahead and let's pick the same cover one that I'm running a lot when we have this set to base. You can see that these guys are way out of position, which is not, horrible if you're in zone coverage like i said if i'm just in a regular cover three it doesn't matter because they're going to get there if you run something like this and your opponent um you know let's just say they're running a lot of crossing routes which is going to give a, def a defense like this problems right like i said they're all out of, of alignment <clears throat> this one here i don't really want him being back that far that's probably my only issue that's why i'm bringing the safeties down but you don't want them necessarily out of alignment but they'll still it, you know if they're crossing the field they're still going to catch up is the real issue would be if they're running like the opposite way as you can see right there i mean he he the cornerback was way too far out of alignment there the um the the for the crossing route especially this is why man coverage when it comes to man coverage especially as you can see right here slay best cornerback on the field but look how far away he is look how much inside leverage he's giving up so that's why against something like this you want them aligned and if you're running man coverage, you're gonna you're not gonna want to run base because you're gonna want these guys aligned. But now your opponent is seeing what you're what you're what you're using on defense. So these are just two very important distinctions. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. A lot of times, like I said, I will leave it in base just because um, you know my job as a user defender. Anyway, I mean I'll bring these guys in closer, so it's not necessarily. Um, you know, manually bring these guys closer so they're not necessarily getting burned. But I always want to hide my coverage. I find it's probably the better way to go. If you see what it looks like now with me just bringing those cornerbacks in to try to take that away, you'll see, I mean, it's my job to cut off crossers anyway. Now, the third way has to do with these, uh, these flats. Like I said, I always leave it on match. There's no reason not to set it to match. Even if you're going to be doing uh, your flats, I still set it to match because there's no real benefit to not to having it to default. There just isn't. So it's always best to put on match. But if you're in a situation, and this is like I said, I usually treat these like a tier system. I'll start off on match. I'll start off on base. Uh, or I'll start off sometimes on default. And if my opponent, I mean, truthfully, I, I typically start off on default now. And if my opponent starts zigging me to death or starts beating me and starts reading the coverages and beating me in a certain way and I can tell it's because they can read my coverage, then I'll kick it up a notch and go to base. Another way is if my opponent... Um, is starting to have success with a specific route and I can't stop a specific route no matter what defense I go to Then I'll go to as a last-ditch effort to the zone drops to the flats to the curl flats the hooks I never really touch but this is something where a lot of people set this from the beginning And if you're playing high-level players like like a lot of pros I could understand that but typically to me if you're playing against somebody and you're not a really great uh, coverage player yourself it's best just to leave it at match because match will hide a lot of your flaws for you will do a lot of things for you but if that's not working then you want to kick it up a notch and go flats now the best flat that i've been using pretty much all year i see a lot of people kind of doing this in reverse 
well they'll do 25 and they'll do five this is kind of like a pro player thing they'll do five for flat so that they can cover the they can do a mabel concept it really doesn't matter they do that because they run cover two and they don't want to give up anything outside i don't really run cover two so for me i run a lot of cover three cover four and if i were to set my flats i would do it the reverse way because i want my my flats i typically just hard flat and then um you know if i want to leave the curls like i want to have the option to hard flat. i don't mabel a ton but that's pretty much your two uh, best options as far as like the depths of most routes. So I'm gonna go to end the video there. I hope that I described this in a way that makes sense. If it did, let me know in the comment section, hit the like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber because I do put them out every once in a while as my style of play changes to match the, the changes in the game. So that's that the video. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.